Boston-born Lauren Greenfield has been exploring culture through photography and documentaries for more than 30 years. Her past projects include perhaps the greatest Super Bowl ad ever, hashtag like a girl. She also directed the HBO documentary Thin, which follows four women with eating disorders working toward recovery, beauty culture, a critical examination of beauty and pop culture, and the Queen of Versailles, about the owners of one of the largest and most expensive homes in the country till the crash of 08. In her latest film, Generation Wealth, Greenfield presents a visual history of our growing obsession with money, beauty, sex, and more, which Variety calls a compelling argument for a society on the brink of decline. Here's a sampling. 33 pounds of gold and diamonds given to me by superstars of the world. I love money. Come to me. I would have money as big as a swarm. In case it... I know the names of the Kardashians better than I know the names of my neighbors. If I want to work 100 hours a week and never see my family and die at an early age, that's my prerogative. It's kind of like the end of Rome. Societies accrue their greatest wealth at the moment that they face death. Award-winning artist, photographer, and filmmaker Lauren Greenfield joins me now. Lauren, it's great to meet you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So is it fair to say Generation Wealth, the title's a little misleading. It's not just about more money. It's more sex. It's more money. It's more power. It's more everything. I mean, that's the theme, right? Yeah. I mean, what I learned when I was doing this project is that wealth wasn't just about money. It was whatever gives us value. Sometimes it was fake it till you make it, just looking the part. It was also about the currency of beauty and the currency of fame and the currency of sexuality and youth. When did this become the American dream? One of the lines I love is the bow to the bag thing about those Birkin bags. I don't even know about them. I look them up, $17,000 to $120,000 for a handbag. When did this become, again, as I said, the American dream? I think pursuit? actually last year one went for auction for $300,000. Okay. I so, mean, that's really what I was looking at is I've been photographing for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And when I started looking back at my work, I realized that these 25 years were also this time where we've had a kind of seismic shift in our values, where the American dream, which in my father's generation meant hard work and frugality and discipline, had kind of metamorphosized into a culture that valued celebrity, bling, and narcissism. By the way, that was your kid, we should say, your older <laughs> son who said in that thing, I know more about the Kardashians than my neighbors. I, I love that. Speaking of 25 years ago, I love that you went back and interviewed so many people who you had talked to 25 years ago. What was the common thread in them then, and what's the common thread in them now? Well, I I went back to people at a different, different times, mm. but... The, I started my career photographing kids in L.A. Mm -hmm. and kind of how they were influenced by the values of Hollywood. Teenagers. And by the way, you were a kid in L.A. in one of those rich kids schools, too, even though you were probably a tier or two down. From and that's yes. kind of how I got into yeah. it, by going back to the world that I grew up in and kind of taking this idea of in-depth kind of photojournalism, almost anthropological kind of study, but looking at my own culture. So and I what happened to so many of those people 25 years later? Well, in the movie, you see some of the shifts that happen. I mean, at the time, I was stunned by kind of how kids were growing up quickly, how they were mm -hmm. influenced by the culture of materialism. And some of them stayed the same. There's some boys in the beginning of the film who yes. you see at the end. Those three guys, And right? they're still kind of good old boys yeah. doing the almost like teenagers. But one of the girlfriends, Mijanu, who was in a picture that was on the cover of my book and it, in 1997, and she was um, this beautiful girl. Perfect who, body, as she described herself. She yeah. was actually voted best yeah. physique yeah. at Beverly Hills High. And she, her journey was really unexpected. She kind of went completely off the grid wanting to give her daughter very different life and very different values. You know, it's not just her. You have the hedge fund uh, zillionaire who is in exile in some country. You have the porn star. You have the woman who spent all her money to go to Brazil to have her whole body redone. And in all those cases, redemption mm -hmm. is the theme. And I was wondering, are they handpicked by you because you hope that the place everybody ends up, which is where they end up, basically saying money and beauty was really not what life is about? Or do you think they're the norm? Do you think they're... No, I don't think they're the norm. In a way, I think they're the truth tellers for this story because they were so involved in the pursuit of, the kind of addictive pursuit of 
money or the perfect body or fame and money and kind of a combination of all of them, that they had these huge rises and big falls. And some of them learned, and some of them, I think we wonder if they learned. But they had to, re they had to reach bottom. To l if they didn't learn just by evolving. They learned by having the bottom drop out of that which they thought was most important, right? And that's kind of what I came to, that consumerism is an addiction, and that the only way you get rid of addiction is by hitting rock bottom and having the possibility of change. And that's what I saw. This project was kind of born out of the financial crash, which was one kind of crash or collapse. Mm -hmm. But you also see a lot of the people in the film have their own personal crashes. And by the way, for those watching tonight, they shouldn't be upset. It's not just the U.S., the United States sickness, even though we have it worse. You go to Russia, you go to China. Is it in China where the person is building a replica of the White House with Mount Rushmore? Oh, my God, in the distance. So they're sort of baby U.S.'s, are they not? I mean, in a way, I was looking at how we're exporting these values yeah. and how through globalism, through our media, we see very similar things. And that really impacted me in the crash to see such similar kinds of imagery and consequences all over the world. Last night, last Saturday night, Michelle Wolf spoke uh, briefly about somebody who speak, who not, she spoke at length, about somebody who appears briefly in your film. Here's Wolf. Mr. President, I don't think you're very rich. <laughs> like, I think you might be rich in Idaho, but in New York, you're doing fine. You know, when I watched her, which was the same day I watched your film, I said to myself, I want to run this by you and see if you agree, is that for everybody who missed the Trump phenomenon, the conventional wisdom is, oh, we missed that America wanted a disruptor. We missed that America wanted somebody who understood our pain. But watching your film, what I took away was what the connection was. He's, he's the epitome of all the values that, unfortunately, we've come to love. Celebrity, wealth, all, is that a fair statement in your estimation? I think that's right. He's the apotheosis of generation wealth and really embodies the values. And he's kind of a small player in the film, but there's a scene from one of his rallies where he says, it's not about me, it's about you. And I think that's the case, that Generation Wealth is the culture that made Trump possible. Uh, in the intro, we played the sound from that guy who said, uh, society's a mass greatest wealth at the moment they face death. Are you, look at the smile on your face. <laughs> are you predicting the collapse of our culture? Or, what are, you, or are you just uh, issuing a warning? It's kind of a warning because I do think collapse is possible. I mean, I do think we're headed on an unsustainable path, that what you see in the film is that we want more and more, that we're never satisfied, that we can't stop until we crash. And I think that's a dangerous path to be on. And yet the movie, I feel like, does have some hope in people's insights about the kind of matrix that we're in and in those insights having the possibility for change. I agree. I loved your film, Lawrence. A pleasure to meet you. Thanks, Thanks so, so much. much. I appreciate it. Again, a Generation Wealth making the film festival circuit now. It hits theaters on July 20th. For more information, visit generation-wealth.com.